Welcome, everybody. Uh, we will start again with the new series 2023 of webinars. Uh, the MS Council, following the tradition of the last year, has decided to continue the, uh, to meet each other on the web, on our YouTube channel, each uh, uh, first Wednesday of the month. So we stopped a little on January and February, and then with March, we will start again our tradition. And we think that maybe apart August, that generally is holiday season, but we will see. We will continue uh, along 2023, and we hope also in the next uh, years to continue with our webinars. So this time, the European Member Society, me as the president, and this time we have also the pleasure to, get, to have as a guest Alexei Volkov, uh, will be will present uh, so the next uh, scientific uh, program. Uh, we are um, sure that uh, anyway, you will have also other news, not only scientific programs part, but also new information about the society, uh, because uh, we would like to in increase also the shares and to the, the, the information to all the people. And uh, at the moment, anyway, I would like to start with uh, Alexei. Uh, he will uh, describe uh, the activities and I would like also to present him. Alexei was uh, graduated from Moscow State University in the chemical department of the Russian Federation in 2001. Uh, also during his PhD, spent about two years in the University of Twente uh, as a visiting scientist. Twente that is in the Netherlands. Uh, Alexei received his PhD degree in polymer science and membrane separation in 2017, and also the habilitation degree in membrane science and uh, petrochemistry in 2000, the same year. Uh, from 2009, so since 2009, he was holding position of deputy director of TOPKEF, Institute of Petro Petrochemical Synthesis of the Russian Academic Academy of Science in Moscow and also head of Polymeric Membrane Laboratory in the same institute since the 2018. Um, now he's uh, holding the position of visiting professor in Biological and Environmental Science and Engineering Division, uh, Advanced Membrane and Pores Material Center in Kaust in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have to say that Alexei is also serving for the membrane community as council member of the European Membrane Society, and also is board member of the World Association of uh, Membrane Society. So it's really active in uh, membrane uh, also uh, community. And uh, I leave you the floor, so uh, please uh, start. Elena, thank you very much and um, welcome everyone. Um, and that's my pleasure to start that series of the seminars uh, of European Member Society in 2023. And today I will talk about uh, polar um, acryl and nitrile as a polymer, which uh, are partially forgotten, but uh, they still can be considered as a good platform for development of different type of the membranes. And um, Today we talk a, um, a lot about the uh, sustainability and uh, how that can be improved. And uh, if we have a look on what uh, sustainability means, that uh, that ability to maintain or, or to support a process over the time. And that's the reason why the membranes can be uh, helpful in, in uh, that direction. Uh, because with the membranes, so we can cut uh, the part of the operation cost uh, uh, in contrast to the uh, uh, classical separation approaches like a distillation. But the most interesting thing that I was noticed that if we have a look on the on the graph on the uh, right bottom corner, so that um, how much uh,
Okay, I think that uh, that was like a temporary um, a pr uh, problem be the be the be the connection. I apologize for that. Well, what I'm saying that uh, if, if we have a look on that um, graph, so we we can see that how much energy we need to uh, to spend and uh, how much carbon dioxide is going to be emitted by the production of the same amount of the product. And the polymers are the most um, uh, intensive in, in that terms of uh, of the parameters comparing with the different uh, uh, construction materials. So it means that uh, we probably need to think how to make sustainable not only the processes but also the production of the of, of the polymers and the membranes itself. And that's a reason why we have uh, a certain. Um, activity in Europe towards to replacement of the hazardous organics. And that's the reason why uh, many researchers today are focusing on the replacement of the common solvent using for the uh, membrane fa uh, fabrication by the, by the green one. And uh, if you'd like to, to design something, and that's not only the membranes for, for tomorrow ap application, so, oh, we shall focusing on the considering on the bulk materials that that already produce in in industry, um, and of course we have to reduce the chemicals we use uh, for for the, the fabrication of the membranes. Also reducing um, uh, not only the waste but the amount of the uh, toxic and uh, hazardous materials uh, also in, in involved in uh, uh, that uh, process together with the reduction of energy. And um, uh, that's really good uh, applaud that, that I'd like to, um, uh, to present. And that's from the recent paper of White in 2020. That's just describing that uh, we can work a lot on the development of the new polymers uh, because uh, every year so we can find a new polymers, a new copolymers, a new uh, mixed matrix membrane compositions. But at the same time, we still have so many polymers that that's available on, on, on the market. And if we especially going from the lab uh, environment when we're using the pure gases, sometimes mixed gases, to the field conditions, uh, all of that new polymers might not withstand with the classical uh, pol polymeric materials that's already used in the industry. And that is really good illustration from the white paper, um, paper uh, that's demonstrating that the reason why cellulose acetate is still um, used for the um, uh, natural gas processing, uh, despite the fact that so many polyamides, so many new polymers are more perspective than the cellulose uh, uh, acetate in the case of the uh, um, uh, lab scale um, testing. And um, um, and uh, when we'd like to make a membrane, so we need to focusing on a different um, aspects, some uh, such as polymer, what, uh, what kind of the polymer we'd like to use, what are the casting solutions, do, do we need or not a post-treatment? And uh, from that point of view, then, um, I think that's quite interesting still considering polar acrylon and nitrile as a good platform to, to, for, to fabricate various uh, type of the membranes. And, um, and first I start with, um, uh, with how casting solution, how solvent, non-solvent nature might impact on the uh, uh, preparation of the membrane. As, as we know that um, a pan membrane that is better material. So that means that we cannot make a selective layer made of the pan, but pan uh, material can be used um, as a constructive material to form the, um, the porous membranes. And there are um, a list of the uh, uh, good solvents and the bad solvents, which can be used for the dissolving of the polymers and also for the precipitation of that. And I'd like to point out that uh, it's worth to use Hansen SLBLC uh, 
parameter distance to estimate how can we uh, cast the membrane by the NIPS method. And on the next slide, I will um, I, I will show that. Uh, please apologize for the small graph. So there was a last minute change because uh, the system does not support animation. Uh, what I'd like to, to to show here that if if we have on, on the left graph, if we have the Hansen's uh, allowability parameter distance lower than the pan, it means that we have the mixture of polymer and solvent uh, which forms one phase. And once we increase the uh, other component in the polymeric solution, in, in that case, we have the phase transition into the two phases. So that means that we have the bad solvent or something like that. And indeed that if we uh, uh, considering two solvents, DMCO and also NMP, we can see that uh, less water is required to uh, to go uh, uh, through the um, uh, uh, threshold value 11. So that means that we have the precipitation. And, it, and if we just link that with the experimental data, indeed we can see that uh, when we use DMCO, uh, we need... Um, Actually, um, uh, 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 we need um, uh, less water to to get the phase separation in the system and and to form the membranes. So it means that by changing um, um, NMP by DMCO, we can also play around with the casting conditions and how to uh, prepare our membranes. Besides, we can also change. The, um, the composition of the casting solution by adding another co-solvent. And that is a good example when we add acetone at the co-solvent in the pan solution with DMCO or NMP. And, um, and what we can see here from the, from the Hansen as uh, allowability data that uh, we, we can add more acetone in the case of the DMCO, like up to 50% replacement of the DMCO by acetone whether the, with the NMP, we, uh, we can replace only 40% of the NMP by acetone because otherwise system would not get one phase system. And uh, the good thing that of the acetone, acetone can, can also be produced by the fermentation, IB fermentation. It means that uh, we can re uh, replace the uh, uh, classical solvent by um, a renewable solvent like acetone. And that's the same what we showed uh, on the last uh, previous slide. The phase diagram also showing that when we add acetone, we drive the system more closer to the phase separation. So it means that we need less water to add to get the phase uh, uh, inversion with the uh, forming of the porous system. And that's um, a good example of uh, what uh, was done by, by, by our colleagues from the um, Institute of um, uh, uh, Solution Chemistry. Uh, so they added uh, this, uh, the dye into the uh, polymeric uh, uh, solution uh, to track the, the diffusion of the uh, polymer. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, that's the that was added I, I, into the water to see how the water goes inside of the membranes. And uh, if we have a look on the three first rows, we can see that with the change of the acetone, increasing acetone from zero to thirty percent in NMP, also lead to to the quite noticeable change of the morphology of the membrane. And the same thing last two row we can see that replacement of NMP by DMCO also changed a lot the, the porous structure of the membrane. It means that by changing of the composition, we can able to play around and to yield different uh, structure of the porous membranes. And that is uh, just a confirmation that uh, we replace 50% of the uh, DMCO by acetone and in that case, it was possible to change molecular weight cutoff if we have a look on the right graph from 55 down to 1.1 kilogram per mole. 
And that is actually the first time when there was quite tight OF membrane was achieved for the for the for, for pan uh, for pan material. Of course, that is with the uh, uh, with the trade off. So it we also losing the the permeant. But the most important thing that uh, by selecting the proper composition of the casting solution, we can also change the the molecular weight. Uh, cut off of the resulted membrane. And on the right hand side, there is the same pictures of the DMCO membrane. When, when we use only DMCO and the uh, uh, bottom one, when we uh, mix DMCO with acetone, and that's actually impact on the porous structure. So um, um, it's the same thing that was for the nibs, but they can also use with the, with the, with the VIPs. And uh, also replacement of that one might also change molecular weight cutoff uh, uh, by using not only NIPS but also VIPS method as well. But for this slide, I'd like to show that uh, how can we change the, the morphology of the membrane uh, from the um, finger-like uh, porous structure to the um, um, sponge-like by changing uh, which mechanism of the phase inversion is, is going to be dominant. And if we are uh, keeping the quite low exposure time to the water vapors, let's say up to 10 minutes. So in that case, we immerse after that the membrane e e into the water. And that's mean that we don't have sufficient time to get the phase inversion in the bulk uh, uh, material of the polymeric solution, and uh, that means that we have the phase inversion um, uh, is uh, proven by the contact with the water liquid as a non-solvent. But once we wait like a 20 minutes or more, in that case, the phase inversion is completed by the contact with the water vapors. That's also quite important to to understand. Uh, how to, how to operate our um, uh, system uh, for the fabrication of the membranes, getting a finger-like structure or a sponge-like structure by using the same composition and the same casting solution. Um, good uh, um, um, a feature of the pan. That is quite uh, widely uh, dis, um, uh, produced uh, uh, by the different companies. And uh, there was our idea, okay, let's uh, probably making benchmarking uh, and take different samples of the commercial membrane, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, commercial polymers. So we, uh, we tested a several pan, uh, industrial samples that uh, uh, mostly Changing, I mean, from the hom homopolymer to the to the copolymers, but also molecular weight was changed from 61 uh, to to 200 kilogram per mole. And interestingly, that uh, I really like that data. Uh, uh, when we cast the membrane uh, based um, on the different uh, polymers, but the same concentrations, in that case, we can achieve quite different. Uh, morphology of the membranes. Uh, and uh, we can uh, note that we have the a certain transition from the finger-like pores to the sponge-like pores here as well. And that's mostly because of the viscosity. And, and for that particular case, we use a DMCO. And, and we found that if the viscosity is the range of from 42 to 78 Pascal per second, that's a kind of the transition uh, range when we get a mix of the finger-like and uh, sponge-like structure, but for the higher viscosity, we will get always the sponge-like uh, structure. It means that if we'd like to get um, different morphology, so we don't need to go to the, to the, to the different uh, polymers. So we can stick with the same polymer, like a pan, but then, uh, based on the viscosity or sorry of the molecular weight of the polymer, we can adjust the concentration to reach this certain threshold um, um, uh, value of the viscosity 
to go for the finger-like or sponge-like uh, some, some, uh, structure. But more interestingly that if we replace the solvent with a DMF, in that case, we will get mostly um, uh, finger-like uh, some, uh, some, uh, structures because DMF uh, some, uh, solutions have a uh, lower viscosity. And if you're thinking how to get the sponge-like structure with, the, with the your polymer, uh, try to think to use more viscous solutions or to add additives or to increase the viscosity and then you will get the sponge-like as a, as a, as a structure because the, uh, the NIPS process that uh, 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 depends on the diffusion of the components from the polymeric solution phase to the non-solvent phase and also vice versa. And the, and the higher viscosity of the polymeric uh, solution might hinder that diffusion and to make it more uh, uniform phase separation avoiding the, the penetration of the liquid phase e into the polymeric uh, solution forming finger-like structure. And when we just plotted all of the data, that's, that's for the, for the, for the uh, DMCO, that's your, your rejection uh, uh, versus pure water of flux. So we can find that uh, possible four or five uh, compositions that are just nearby the, uh, that upper bound. And, um, and that's quite interesting data because uh, uh, which is showing that uh, by selecting uh, uh, the proper polymer upon uh, upon sample, so we can vary the um, the water flux uh, from 135 up to 600 something, and uh, with the uh, 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 rejection of the um, of the PVP, it's, so there's like uh, 40 kilogram per mole uh, from um, 70 to to 92. And uh, if we make a comparison of the DMCO and also DMF, uh, we linked uh, two points. Uh, if, if the point, let's say, for the DMCO green point is, is on the upper bound, so there is the dash line goes to the same composition that was uh, 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 used for the casting the membrane, but from another solvent. And uh, what we can see here, so that's a, re a replacement of DMF by DMCO, allow us usually getting a higher flux and a higher rejection. So um, once again, that uh, if we uh, take into account all of the things, so we can uh, play around with the, not only the polymer, but also the solvent nature to optimize and to improve the separation performance of, of the membranes. And um, and if you'd like to make a transition from the whole of or from the flat sheet to the hollow fibers, so it's uh, on the left uh, hand uh, side. So there are two graphs, and to and and we mark the region of uh, of the viscosity, which is quite optimal for the fabrication of OF hollow fiber membranes. And um, and we can see here that's based on the flat sheet membrane. So we can also select quite a, 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 a potentially good composition for the hollow fiber spinning. And uh, we took the the point. I mean, that's on the right hand side. That is a composition that is already on the upper bound for the for the uh, using for the hollow fiber um, uh, spinning. And in that case. Uh, we make a comparison DMCO and also NMP. And once again, that um, based on the data of, for the fledged membranes, we were also able to get a better performance uh, for, for using DMCO instead of the DMF in terms of the uh, hollow fibers, making uh, um, OF range uh, membranes or also using that as a, as a support for the gas separation membranes. Um, but at the same time, today, so it's, we have quite a good uh, measure level of for the uh, making membranes for the water treatment and for the uh, and for the desalination. But at the same time, there is still a challenging area that uh, 
area of the of application of membranes for for non aqueous systems and with that regards uh, that's quite important to look to the uh, materials that that are stable in in organic solvents and once again that pan is quite interesting material because it can be crosslinked by the different um, approaches and make them polymer and the membrane insoluble in the aprotic solvents that are usually usually using for the casting of the membranes and today uh, we will focusing more on the third option that, that's infrared irradiation heating uh, because in that case we don't need to use extra chemicals and also we can significantly reduce the uh, the processing time from one up to 12 hours down to 5 or 15 minutes because if we uh, uh, think about the upscaling so we have to keep in mind also how that approach will be uh, possibly apply on the industrial level and the and the thermal treatment like uh, that's uh, which might require it, uh, several hours might be not uh, durable for the large scale and the difference between the conventional heating and also infrared heating uh, is that in the case of the conventional heating so we have um, the heaters that uh, uh, that uh, uh, transfer the heat from the uh, walls of the oven to the center where the sample is is located. But in the case of the infrared, that's vice versa. Infrared uh, radiation firstly heated the sample and then heat uh, 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 transfer goes from the center to the um, uh, to the environment. And that means that we can concentrate the the heating on on the sample which uh, might also reduce the the time required for the for the for the transformation of the uh, pan of the pan material and uh, by using infrared so that's possible goes from the net pan to the carbon membrane and for the carbon membrane actually we need a lower temperature something like 600 c to get that instead of that what people are using like eight nine nine hundred c and that's a good benefit of the infrared uh, um, uh, treatment uh, due to the lower temperature required to get the same material. Well, that's uh, data um, on the stability of the membranes uh, which we uh, uh, prepared uh, and 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 uh, and modified by by infrared and. Um, as we can see here, we we can start with the 100 C in 15 minutes of the treatment, which give us already stable membranes in a dimethyl acetamide. But if you'd like to to improve the stability, then we need to increase uh, uh, temperature or the exposure time, and uh, actually at at 170 C and five minutes of the treatment, the membrane are stable in the most common aprotic solvents used for the membrane fabrications. That's that's DMCO, NMP, DMF, and dimethyl acetamide. And that's uh, quite interesting uh, because uh, okay, that's something. Okay, I will skip that because there is a problem with the uh, with the. Isolation. But the thing that what, what I'd like to say here, uh, we have um, in terms of um, um, molecular uh, transformation of the pan material with the forming of the double bonds and the cycles that uh, transform that material uh, into non-soluble uh, uh, form, which can be used later on for the um, um, organic filtrations. And uh, in terms of the mechanical properties, we don't actually have quite a big loss of them, uh, so uh, which might still be attractive for the fabrication of the membranes, which can be still used as it is. And um, most important thing that uh, uh, we did a filtration um, of the uh, membrane in a range of the different solvents, but um, uh, analysis of the cross section of the membrane, uh, initial membrane, and, uh, and uh, after 
identification and after filtration demonstrated that uh, infrared treatment actually uh, does not change the morphology of the membrane, which is important because the, the post-treatment might also change the properties of the membranes uh, and, and which requires also the optimization of, of the casting conditions before that. And um, uh, as I said that, um, we didn't find any change in the morphology and also not so much change in the pore size distribution. So it means that once again, that we, we don't need to, to modify the membrane uh, application protocol. So we take the membrane as it is, we make a post treatment that turns your, uh, your membrane from soluble to insoluble form. And then we can use that for the filtration of the different uh, or organic solvents or to use it as a support for the casting of the thin film on top of that. And uh, for the, for the um, molecular weight cutoff that we um, measured with the water for initial membrane and for the modified membrane, we actually we didn't find any, uh, a big change on that. Once again, that uh, we, uh, we take a pan uh, membrane, we make a, a, a treatment, and we still have the same membrane, but stable in the organic solvents. But most important thing that we uh, talk about the uh, sustainability and the, and the energy consumption, the use of, of the infrared treatment requires uh, uh, something like 6.5 times uh, less energy uh, to get the same uh, organic solvent stable membrane comparing with the uh, 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 conventional heating. And uh, that was done also, apologize that is, uh, that is, uh, so structures are not visible here. Uh, we, we did the same thing with, um, with, um, with Yang Wu Li, with uh, his, uh, his uh, polymers. And we also apply infrared treatment for the uh, thermally rearranged polymers. And uh, it was also done quite effectively. And, um, and we increased the, the productivity of the, uh, of the fabrication of the membrane by the factor of 100, but by the reduction of the time by a factor of 20 and, and energy eight times lower. So it means that we can use that approach not only for the pan material, but also for the materials that required thermal rearrangement as well. And uh, that's uh, part I, I like a lot because uh, uh, when we uh, start to work with the pan and start to make that insoluble, I was thinking, okay, uh, if we use the different um, materials to make a, a support layer and the selective layer, but can we use the same material to make the support layer and, and also the selective layer? And uh, before that, we used the same approach for making uh, membranes um, uh, for the um, gas liquid contactors. That's for the CO2 capture when, when we use uh, ethanol mine uh, for the capturing of the carbon dioxide. And then we have to, we have to regenerate the solvent by the... Um, by applying of the temperature and the pressure swing. And in that case, we use the PTMSP, but with a different cis trans ratio because uh, uh, cis rich um, uh, PTMSP does not dissolve in the hexane. And then we just made one a layer made of the one PTMSP, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, in, um, uh, uh, which is uh, soluble uh, in uh, uh, in all um, uh, solvents except hexane, and then we cast it uh, PTMSP from um, uh, with the uh, trans-rich uh, um, uh, uh, segments, uh, but that uh, solution was from the hexane. So that means that the first layer of, uh, was not completely dissolved, and and it was possible to get a defect-free. Uh, Composite membrane on top of the microporous uh, uh, support. So, and uh, we thought, okay, let's let's make the same with the with the, with the pan. So it means that we can use the pan to make the 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 porous support, 
we can then making uh, infrared treatment, making insoluble in the organic solvents, and then to cast the top layer made of the same pan material, uh, making a more tunable uh, porous structure of this elective layer. And uh, why that's uh, uh, sustainable? Because we can imagine that we can use the same polymer, the same solvent on the industrial level. And in that case, we need to use less variety of the chemicals and, and we need to regenerate less variety of the chemicals just to recycle back for the fabrication of the membrane. And uh, that approach was was confirmed. So it we, uh, we took the first layer made of the pan. And for that case, we used 58% of the pan solution in, in uh, DMCO on uh, a central uh, a small graph. There is uh, um, a fluxes of, uh, I mean, uh, 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 that, that is a permeance of the different solvents or um, aprotic solvents through the uh, 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 treated porous support. And then uh, we casted the selective layer made of the another composition by the same polymer, but that's 28% of, of the pan in, in DMCO plus, plus acetone. And it was possible to reach quite a good molecular weight cutoff 1.8 kilogram per mole with of course reduction of uh, the pyramids from 220 for the first layer and and 37.8 uh, liter per meter uh, square um, hour and bar uh, for the double layer membrane and uh, as a as I said before that, by uh, using the different approaches of the casting of the top layer by using nips or whips, we can also um, adjust the pore size distribution and the performance of the membrane. Um, on the left hand side, so it, uh, you can see that how can we change the morphology of the top layer by applying nips or whips methods. And on the right hand side, uh, we can say that uh, the WIPS method usually gives us the bigger pore size and NIPS smaller pore size. But the most important thing that by uh, casting of the uh, thin top layer, that's possible to reduce the pore size of the support material itself. In other words, um, uh, we can optimize to make uh, the high permeable support material by using the first stage. And on the next stage, we can just make a tunable uh, a porous uh, uh, elective layer with the, uh, with the desired um, uh, pores and molecular weight cutoff. In that case, we don't need to, to think about how to make nice selective layer together with the a, with a so, uh, support layer as well. And uh, last but not the least, that's uh, that's example how can we use the uh, pan not only as a, as a membrane material, but also the pillars. A pillar can be a beach, a beach can be used for the for the mitigation of the uh, physical aging of the of the polymers of intrinsic microporosity, and uh, because as as I said before that, um, infrared treatment uh, can also be uh, uh, applied for the getting um, active carbon, and that's quite a um, uh, uh, filler with the with the high um, uh, surface area, two point four thousand square meter per gram. And um, and we did a comparison of the of the porous aromatic framework that we use a top shift suit with the with the active polyacrylon atrial active carbon, and uh, in that case we don't need actually to use the this sophisticated uh, chemistry to make uh, um, organic porous cages, but we can still use the cheap material like a pan and to use an um, affordable approach to make a, a highly porous particles and then to get a uh, uh, good assessability of the, um, of the uh, 
uh, PTMSP uh, membranes in time. So we just observed that a thin film uh, composite membrane for the more than, than one year at the room temperature, and it was possible to to achieve quite good uh, effect of the addition of that filler to the to the to the PTMSP. Actually, that is that is that is the data, and uh, as I said that before that um, we can combine different approaches and mixed matrix membranes of course that is quite a uh, interesting uh, um, approach to optimize the membranes and the pan material itself uh, can also add not as a support material but also as a as a as an additive for, for the for the for gas separation membranes once again that's um, um, what i'd like to um, emphasize that uh, today we are, have a lot of polymers, and also new polymers are coming every every year. But uh, at the same time, we we already have a variety of the good polymers, and more careful um, uh, consideration of the uh, of the parameters that um, affecting on the uh, formation of the porous membranes. Uh, might give uh, a, a certain opportunity to get a variety of the membranes based on the same polymer, but with the understanding how each parameter affects on the resulted membrane performance. And with that, I would like to thank you all of you for the for the attention and uh, the um, the biggest thanks to my team in Moscow. And I'm ready to answer your question. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Alexei, for this interesting uh, uh, talk. And uh, 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 let's uh, wait for uh, some questions. Uh, they can leave, the people can leave the uh, question in chat. Uh, we will collect uh, them at the time at the end of the presentation. We will provide speaker for discussion. So thank you. I think that I need probably also to go to the to, to the YouTube or probably I can go from from my mobile. Uh, yes, yes, uh, we sent already, so we are just waiting for the end of the presentation. Okay, in the meantime, I have just one provocative at the end. You said that anyway, <laughs> uh, it is a lot of research, new research, uh, really new interesting material, but. Uh, uh, do you think that could be also a problem of uh, cost of using new material, not only so the performance, referring to the fact that uh, this, uh, how to say, industry and related application could just shift their mind to going in something new? Or is it just uh, a problem of, uh, uh, let's say, performance? Could be just something else. Uh, well, the cost uh, it depends uh, which uh, which polymer we we would like to use and and for the which layer for the thin selective layer, the cost of the material might not be so important um, uh, whereas we'd like to use that as a as an asymmetric membrane, and the high cost of the polymer might of course uh, hinder the for the upscaling. Uh, because we're considering the new polymers, so we need to make uh, the whole chain from the monomers to the polymers. And uh, secondly, that we need to uh, we need to control also the properties of the polymers to get uh, uh, the producible uh, properties of the polymeric uh, batches from uh, uh, from batch to batch. Okay, Alexei, uh, I think we at the moment have no que new questions from the web, although it was followed by several people. And uh, I think that uh, uh, maybe in the meantime, we can give us some news about uh, new activity of MS waiting. And uh, however, I think uh, this uh, 
Mm-hmm. Is the current is just another question, just curiosity. This is also current activity you are performing now in cast. So you are uh, is you are working a little bit more on this uh, material. Well, um, uh, I'm working in in cows for the development of the high throughput techniques uh, and for the uh, uh, doing other. I mean, and uh, approach for the um, for the separation of the complex mixtures uh, uh, by means of the filtration and and the pan material itself. So I don't use it here. Okay. Okay, so I think that at this point, uh, anyway, we can uh, have uh, questions uh, related to, I think we can share anyway uh, from the streaming also this. I think you have here also our uh, uh, information about the web page and uh, for sure, I think, uh, uh, in case you could also ask uh, and write us uh, referring to some specific question of Alexei. Anyway, I would like to thank you for the really nice uh, um, webinar. Uh, this. You're welcome, always. You can even uh, send you questions by email. Uh, I would like to come back a little bit uh, before the end of our webinar to our, how to say, uh, your membrane. Uh, um, European Member in Society activities, since you are also on the board. And I think that uh, we can share also the slides referring to one new activity that is something that is the uh, our uh, uh, member, uh, summer school that will be held in Rome, Italy, in May, between 19 and 29. We have a news that the, the new early bird the registration date has been changed now is uh, March 15, 2023, so uh, we are welcoming other students, other people participating. And uh, you have also here the um, website so where you can find all the information and procedure to register, just to look at the organization of the summer school. And uh, I would like also to announce, as said before, that uh, next uh, first of April Wednesday will be a little bit more not how to say scientific presentation like also what we did uh, before. Uh, Professor Drioli is one of the uh, how to say group of people that founded the society 40 years ago. I would like to remember that just last year we had the special edition of Euromembrane in uh, November. Uh, anyway, he will give an overview of the society and uh, will uh, describe uh, some uh, activities and also how this society started. And I think in this case, uh, we are also interested to sharing this also to all the people that were not attending also Euromembrane. So uh, I would like to thank you again, Alexei. Uh, I think also in the next seminars, for sure, uh, people of the Council will give also maybe one or two slides just indicating the activities. So to encourage uh, new people, uh, researcher to be part of our community. And uh, uh, I think I would like to uh, thank you all the participants. And with this, I would like to finish the uh, our webinar. Thank you. Yeah, and I would like to add that please follow our website, EMS website, for the all of the calls for the um, for the conference fee awards, uh, which is quite uh, important uh, for the for the young uh, generation. And EMS is a core core interest of the EMS is indeed to support young scientists uh, for for their mobility. Yes. And also, don't forget that uh, that uh, write a nice papers and also a nice th thesis because AMS also uh, uh, is uh, carrying out the different uh, activity to to select the best paper awards and 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 best thesis, and that will be published on on the website. Yes. 
Thank you, Alexei, for this news. I think we, we you all the people, especially people uh, working of the working party, uh, re referring to awards, we leave a little bit more space also in the next uh, webinars, maybe win one or two slides. And uh, thank you, everybody. Okay, bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.